Doomhammer is a legendary weapon from Warcraft. Passed from the mighty warrior and warchief Orgrim Doomhammer to a young thrall who would use it to help unite and save the orcish race, this one's been on my wish list for a while. Of course, as often I do, I started in SketchUp and certainly did for all of the 3D printed parts. The build for this was going to use 3D printed parts for all the details and uh, the handle and the head of the hammer would be made out of wood. So with the printed parts ready, I used wood putty. That's my preferred method for finishing printed parts. Uh, thinned with a little bit of water. This putty is nice because it'll it goes on purple and then it'll turn white when it's dry So I've got all different pieces And once they're dry then I can sand those down Which is a great use for a sanding mop And then a couple coats of a filler primer to finish that off. Now for the handle I found an old piece of oak and I just had to flatten it out so that I could cut it down and get it ready for turning. Turning dry oak like this <laughs> can be uh, throw a lot of chips so I just cut some of the corners off. But this is going to be a pretty straightforward piece other than it's pretty long as you can tell but really I just need to turn a, a simple taper on over the hole of the handle make sure that it's gonna fit the parts that I printed out and then turn two tenons on each end one to fit the hammer and one to fit at the, the end the tail of, of the handle So it's just a matter of simple spindle turning and checking checking what that final width is. The Doom Hammer itself, it's been on my like I say, wish list for a while. Um, one of probably the best known prop makers, at least in my mind, is Harrison Cricks of Vulpin Props, and he made a version years ago that's uh, that's just stunning. It's really simply beautiful, and I've wanted to make one ever since I've seen his version. Of course, mine's a little different, and I added a, a few uh, different details. To build the head of the hammer, I did consider 3D printing it, which would help make it light and easy to carry, but uh, the print for that, it, it was just so large that I would have to break it up into two pieces and each print was going to take, uh, I, I tried a couple iterations and I could not get it to be anything less than about 35 to 40 hour print for each half. So I ended up using this wood, which of course works just fine gives it a nice heft. And this was just two by sixes that I was cutting down to the final size. And then cutting tapers on it. So we'll for each side of the, the hammerhead. Now here I made a mistake because I'm I was cutting chamfers which needed to be along the axis of the hammerhead and I, I made one not so I had to do a quick fix here but that's easy and this will be hidden by a later strip of wood as well so I didn't have to worry too much about how this looked or how clean it was I just wanted something in here to help support it.
And then of course, dimension lumber from your home center is not going to be very flat, so I did plane it down a little bit to make sure that it was as flat as could be. Didn't have to be, this isn't fine woodworking obviously, just needed to be pretty close. So to attach the hammer head all together, I just use glue at first and let that set. But the glue's not holding it. That what's actually holding it is these long screws. Because glue for that ingrain wouldn't hold very well. But glue here is gonna be long grain to long grain. So at this point, it is only glue that will hold these final details on. And that will be plenty strong. Like I said, it's long grain to long grain. And so a few details added on the end. And now it's time for the banding. And based on the angles, to make up the 45 degree angle, I just cut these at 22 and a half degrees each. And then trimmed them down a little bit as needed so that they fit together well and the glue will hold this in place too the glue will be plenty strong here and I'm just using little pins to hold it in place while the glue dries so once I had all that done I took a big hammer and I just beat the heck out of it I wanted it to look, you know, this is this is a massive blunt weapon that's been through multiple owners and many battles and it needs to be just beat all to heck. Same thing here, so I'm using a chisel and just creating lots and lots of scars on it. Give it lots of deta uh, detail, lots of weathering, lots of personality. Now in Legend, the actual, uh, the notable um, wolf head emblem here wasn't added until it was passed to Thrall and he added it as a symbol of the Frost Wolf Clan. In the games, the appearance of the Doomhammer changes. Uh, from time to time and and with that in mind I you know I took some liberties myself to just say you know this is my preference or, or you know little details that I I like so with the hammer basically finished I primed it and gave it a couple coats of a sort of a, a weathered bronze weathered silver and then we'll weather it some more and I sort of went back and forth as to what the finish would be on these details and whether it would be highly contrasting or not but in the end I just went with darker colors and then it was time to weather even the 3d printed parts and I used the Dremel a little bit but mostly found that the chisel worked best. It gave nice, big, deep cuts, and there's no subtlety in Warcraft. Uh, they use big, everything is big and over the top, and um, so I wanted big, deep scars. Weathering was done with just acrylic paints, a mix of black and gray, uh, with just little bits of, of dark red and yellow. And then I take a silver and sort of polish over generally to give it a sheen and then hit the edges with a little foam brush to highlight those and, and give it again just a little bit of detail. And finally it was time to glue this all together. So I'm making sure that I had the, the parts uh, mounted on the handle, I could glue the handle and the the head together with wood glue and the rest of the parts were glued on with uh, with crazy glue I just had to make sure I was aligning it correctly 
I finished that little bit of the handle, um, added some scars to it, added a little bit of uh, darker polish, and then the rest will be wrapped. So that was it finished. So now this is all glued up, and I can come in and add some more details. Now I added the tape here earlier because I don't know if this matters, but I thought that when I wanted to glue these pieces, I wanted to glue them to the wood itself and not to the paint on top and that that would be stronger. So again, I'm not sure if that matters, but that's why I did it. So that I'm gluing directly to the wood. And so I had all this mask off throughout the, the head of the hammer and just lots of glue. I was gonna use epoxy, but then my epoxy was dried out, so back to the crazy glue and it's held up fine. Bit more weathering. And then finally, I can wrap the handle. And this was just a, a fake leather that I had um, using glue along the way to make sure that it, it really held on tight. I had to, it lasted about halfway with the length I had and then had to start another one. But at the very end, it's all wrapped and I can cut it just sort of at a really steep angle and then glue that down. And the doom hammer is complete. And the hand, well, <laughs> some weathering. I wondered at this point if I couldn't use like a lighter or some flame to create some weathering on that handle, but that didn't work at all. So back to the acrylic paint, which worked fine. The wonderful thing about this is that you don't want to make it shiny. You just want to make everything look super warm. This, this is such a beast. To hold it feels awesome I just love it this was super fun to build so happy with the way it came out so thanks for watching <laughs>